All right, this show's for geeks only because we're gonna talk about phones that you can't even buy yet, but you can soon. Now with any talk about the best phones expected for 2016, Right at the top of the list has got to be the Galaxy S7. Whether you're a Samsung fan or not, the unveiling of the S7 is going to set the bar for this year's flagship smartphones and will no doubt sell in the millions of units. While the latest rumors suggest that Samsung will be sticking with a very similar design for the S7 and its curved edge variant, we are expecting a number of hardware improvements this year round. Camera technology would likely see a leap forward with Samsung rumored to be either interested in the 25 megapixel Sony IMX300 sensor or using its own 12 megapixel bright cell technology, which features larger pixels for superior light capture. Other tweaks include a USB type C port, high quality audio, and a pressure sensitive display, with many more also rumored. All right, so let's talk about the HTC One M10. And this time, don't get your hopes up because I know many of us had our heart broken last year. In contrast to Samsung's successful Galaxy range, HTC One's M series has gradually declined in momentum, leaving the Taiwanese company's smartphone business in a tough spot. There aren't that many rumors about the M10 right now, so really anything could happen. We're certainly expecting high-end hardware, such as QHD display, Snapdragon 820 processor, and a fingerprint scanner, and hopefully some better camera technology as well. While some still love HTC's familiar design language, it has become increasingly tough for the general consumer to tell each generation from the next. Perhaps this flagship range is in need of an aesthetic redesign in order to kickstart the consumer interest. We can hope. But do you know who has gained momentum? Huawei. Let's talk the Huawei P9. Huawei was one of the big movers in 2015, gaining not only in bigger market share in China, but also further expanding its presence in Europe. The company recently announced its Honor 5X, Mate 8, and a smartwatch that will be heading to the US. The next big announcement from Huawei is expected to be its flagship P9 smartphone. If this handset also heads to the US, Huawei will be going right up against the biggest Android brands in every global market. The Huawei P9 won't just be a big deal for the company's US ambitions though, it's also a showcase for the best technology that the Chinese company can offer. The latest hardware rumors point to a 5.2 inch 1080p display, 3 or 4 gigabytes of RAM, a fingerprint scanner, basically making it a smaller version of the company's recently released, rather good Mate 8. The smartphone will likely feature the company's latest in-house Kirin 950 mobile system on a chip as well. Now, as most of you know, I'm a Canuck. That means Canadian. So I gotta talk about BlackBerry, where we can likely expect a mid-ranger. The phone won't likely appear until the second half of the year, and probably won't be a budget offering either. Instead, BlackBerry will likely develop a super mid-tier smartphone, which could grab the attention of value-seeking customers across the globe. The slow and limited availability of the Priv has been acknowledged by Chen, BlackBerry CEO, and might be the biggest complaint that the company will look into in addressing the next smartphone. Now, for you hardcore viewers out there, you're gonna know how I feel about Chen. I'm sure he's a great guy, but he should have been replaced as BlackBerry CEO right after the launch of the Priv, which flopped. And it flopped because he is not a salesman, okay? He launched it on the BNN network here in Canada. And the BNN network is like the US's Bloomberg. And uh, there was no orchestrated launch. I mean, if you go to Samsung or Apple or any of these massive companies, they have these massively well-organized, well-orchestrated uh, launches to sell the concept of the phone. And he, we had a camera on phone instead of up on a big screen to see a screenshot. And his apps hadn't even loaded yet. He hadn't even loaded the phone. And he clearly didn't even know how to use the phone properly. And so he was just goofing around. It was an embarrassingly bad display of salesmanship. Unforgivable, should have been gone. Now the Priv wasn't a bad phone, but it was a painfully bad launch. For a mid-tier phone, they've got to have a new captain at the ship. What do you guys think? Now here's something you might not have expected. Let's talk about Lenovo's Project Tango. One of the more interesting looking smartphones that we know is on the way is Lenovo's Project Tango handset, which was confirmed at this year's CES. While we don't have the device specifics, Project Tango integration will open up a load of interesting new augmented and virtual reality applications, along with some truly unique software experiences. In case you missed it, Project Tango is a Google-run platform based around computer vision technology. The software uses motion tracking from accelerometers and gyroscopes, along with a specialized camera setup 
to collect 3D information around a space, such as depth and distance. From this data, application developers can do things like overlay augmented information on top of an object within the camera's field of view, or recreate a real space in virtual 3D. So what do you think? What are you most anticipating in 2016? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be reading them. And don't forget about my brother and sister in Android who are working super hard to be your source for all things Android.